Hi there, my name is Aki Anastasio and sitting with me an extraordinary young man who is in the country, he's 17 years old and what he's holding he has designed himself and built himself and printed himself and it started off by noticing that somebody needed an arm like this that would cost $80,000 and he said there's no ways that this person can afford to pay this for an arm and he designed this for a fraction of the cost. Eastern La Chapelle Welcome to South Africa, Thank or should you. I say, welcome <laughs> yeah, there to South you go. Africa. Um, tell us a story. How did you come about designing an arm like this? Yeah, so it's it's been quite the journey. Um, I started when I was 14. Uh, when I was 14, that was the original idea that kind of kickstarted all of this. Um, my first prototype and my first design for all this was this glove-controlled hand. So you actually put on this control glove, and this robotic hand would wirelessly mimic your hand movements. And at the time, I was 14, I just thought that was cool. Um, you know, it's just kind of a, a cool summer project and then it kind of kept going and I really found my niche in, in engineering that I really just wanted to keep making things. I wanted to make something more functional, something more professional, something that's stronger and better all around. And so I, this is actually the second generation of the arm. So I built the first generation and uh, again, that was just for fun. And uh, I just wanted to build things. And then the second generation came from uh, realizing that there's such a need for prosthetics. So. Now, just take us back. You were 14 years old and you started doing all of this. You are from Colorado and the nearest place where you had access to equipment and to go to university and all those important things you need to make something like this were such such a distance away. Exactly. How did you actually get the information and knowledge to build this? Um, well, it really started on the internet. Uh, I really uh, turned to it to, to teach myself um, all the different programming all the different electronics, all the different mechanics, and um, even 3D printing, I started using networking uh, to get access to a 3D printer at the time. And uh, originally I designed a hand, and I was getting quotes of upwards of $500 just to print the hand. And you know, that just to print the hand, that would, that would cost more than a whole arm. Uh, so that was definitely kind of a turning point. Uh, at the time, that I was, I was about to give up. Uh, I didn't have $500 to put into this project, and I didn't even know if it would you know, be successful or not. So uh, I turned to uh, networking, social media, and uh, I actually had a friend that had a 3D printer and he threw it on one night and I had to pay for shipping. So it worked out really well. And then after that, I convinced my parents to, uh, to get a 3D printer and from there on, it keeps going and going. Uh, going into this project was, I had some, some very specific guidelines I had to be within. Uh, the weight, the functionality, and also how you, how you control it. Is it easy? Um, is it external? Is it, is it invasive? So uh, that's, what the, that's what the product was from this, was that there was a completely you know, fingertip to shoulder, functional arm, same degrees of freedom, almost the same strength as a human arm, which is very strong. And uh, it, it's controlled all using your brain, completely external. And the brainwave headset is actually wireless. Even though it's sending a few inches uh, to the arm, psychologically, it's, it, it's a huge difference on the user. You worked this out at 14 years old. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, past few years. Yeah, so, yeah. You was, so you met Barack Obama as well, President Barack Obama. You've showed him this technology. How did he react and what was it like meeting President Obama? It was surreal. I never thought that something I made in my bedroom would be shaking hands with the president. <laughs> um, so it, it, was, it was very fascinating and uh, he liked it a lot. He actually recommended me for DARPA, which is a defense agency. Um, so definitely there, there's, there's a huge need for this, um, not only for prosthetics, but for robotics in general. So where do you go to from now? Um, I'm actually working on the third generation, which again is actually going to be, uh, uh, I'm, I'm still kind of refining the work. So it's going to be lighter, it's going to be stronger, it's going to actually be more affordable. When, when, will, when can we expect to see that? Um, I just need to find more time. I need to get back in my bedroom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, my goal is to have it done before I'm 18. So that, that's, that's where I'm going for. You're an extraordinary young man, and I look forward to seeing more of your projects. Eastern La Chapelle, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Eyewitness News, in touch, in tune, and independent. For the latest, log on to ewn.co.za or ewn.mobi.